Hey folks, welcome back to my shop. I'm Jeff. In the last video, I built this fourth axis for my milling machine. It's a rotary axis. I didn't get a chance to show it making chips in that video, so that's what this video is about. These first cuts I'm making are on a piece of scrap that's sticking kind of far out of the chuck. I'm just jogging the mill's axes to check any movement, chatter, vibrations, or any other bad things that may show up. This end mill is a YG1 3 flute quarter inch carbide going at 3000 RPM. It's moving at 15 inches a minute. The rotation is actually faster than that, and I paused it a few times, as you can see, to slow the jog feed rate in my CNC controller. Slotting this aluminum at 125 thousandths depth of cut actually went perfectly fine. There was no issues, no complaints, none of the problems I feared. I also wanted to check cutting with the side of the end mill. I've had problems with this in the distant past on my spin index where it would actually cause the part to rotate because of the forces at play. The tool only has about 750 thou of flute length and I have to clear the top of the workpiece and the tool holder so I'm basically estimating about 9 sixteenths of tool engagement here with a 50 thou step over. My machine isn't the biggest, so this 60 thou step over is actually a decent sized cut, and there's no chatter, movement, vibrations, or any other indicators of issues with this setup. The surface finishes are all pretty acceptable. There's some swirling on the floor of the very first slot, but it's smooth to the touch. The side milling looks about as it does when I do it in the vise, so good or bad, that finishes the result of the tool end or the machine. This piece of aluminum I started on the lathe. It was to be part of a larger project, kind of unrelated and really not even that interesting, but it's a good example, or test even, of running some code just in a single position with the part held in this, basically just as you would with a spin index. I'm just running a 2D adaptive toolpath to machine out a 200 thou deep pocket on the side of this part. I'm using a 3 8 inch 4 flute carbide roughing end mill, which in my experience will handle just about anything I've thrown at it. I need to come up with a part design that requires some drilling away from the central axis of the spindle, but the hole in the center that I'm drilling here actually went unsurprisingly smooth.
The burr on the edges of the pocket there are actually my fault. I was trying to fit a part off screen uh, unsuccessfully to it. Unrelated, but otherwise same surface finish as with the slotting. It's a little bit swirly, but still smooth. I did tap that hole off camera as well. Aluminum is great and all, but everyone's a hero in it. Here's some steel. This is 17-4 stainless, actually. I tend to keep a lot of it on hand. This part is just something I started on the lathe. Uh, it's essentially a large nut, and it needs to be machined into a hex shape. Obviously, there's a number of different ways to do that on a milling machine, but here's how I did it with some positional fourth axis code. I wanted to try out and show you guys some of the really cool simultaneous fourth axis cutting. Uh, everything's moving all at once. I've got a few designs where that would be really cool to see done, and really it requires it to make those. Fusion uh, wants you to have the manufacturing extension before they'll let you do that in cam, so I need to figure something out in the meantime until I get around to getting that. This part ended up coming out glass smooth. I'm happy with it. Okay, to answer questions and comments about how I set this up, and to introduce a future series answering questions I receive frequently, here's the inaugural episode of the ABCs of CNC, well, DIY CNC. To get computer-controlled motion like this, we can go through the very basics of just how a whole CNC machine like this works. Uh, this just puts us all on the same page. So the computer through a breakout board, uh, sends pulses to the stepper motor driver, which then drives the stepper motor. Seems easy enough. I know this is really basic, we're kind of going over some old ground here, but in Mach 3, the software I use, the very first step is going into the pinouts, uh, essentially telling it which outputs from the breakout board are going to be controlling the stepper driver. So that's super basic, it's just wherever you literally wired the breakout board to your stepper driver. The motor tuning is where the real meat and potatoes are for this. This is where we'll get our speed and accuracy of the motor's rotation. In Mach 3, you can set the steps per, which indicates how many motor steps will move the ultimate workpiece one division, which in this case, it's a rotary axis, so it's one degree. It would be an inch for the other axes. To calculate this is pretty basic, 
We start with the stepper driver, which can be adjusted for micro-stepping, or essentially how minutely you wish for your workpiece to move, ultimately. Uh, this goes from two micro-steps all the way up to 128 at various divisions, and I set it to eight micro-steps. The next part to consider is my ratio between the motor pulley and the spindle pulley, which is six to one, or one to six, depending on which end of the room you're standing, I guess. The motor needs to rotate six full turns to rotate the spindle once. Okay, so a little bit of basic math here, and I'm sorry for this. But our stepper motor has 200 pole positions, almost all of them of this type do. We consider the fact that our driver is set to eight micro steps, we get 1600 pulses from the computer to turn the motor once. Now we times that by six to turn the spindle, aka the workpiece, once and we get 9,600 pulses to turn the workpiece around. We'll then divide that by 360 degrees in a circle, and we get our irrational number as pulses per unit. And luckily Mach 3 is actually fine, which is put again like 0.6667. The motor's velocity and acceleration are measured in units per minute, so in this case it's degrees per minute. And here I've set it up to equate to about 60 RPM, uh, solely as a test of how fast I could move the spindle, and uh, it went just fine. This will be the rapid movement of your machine, so be aware of how fast everything's going before running code and hitting the cycle start. The acceleration is something I generally keep on the lower side, just to be safe, although here I actually increased it. I had started out with just a little bit of a conservative estimate. In the toolpath configuration window, I make sure that A-axis rotations are enabled, and I select the axis it's on, which is along the X-axis in my setup. I set my work coordinate system to the center of the part in Fusion when I'm doing cam, so I haven't had the need to mess with the radius offsets or feed rate in Mach 3 yet, but I'm curious to hear what you all have to say about that. Well, thank you everyone if you made it this long, and thanks especially to my patrons for directly supporting these videos. You can go over there and check it out if you're interested in joining them, or you can just check out my Instagram. Or do whatever you want. I'm not your boss.